I'm Anders here at Sunflare Solar, along with Silas, and today we're going to be doing a shading test with our module compared to a competitor's. So whenever you're camping, your vehicle might be in shade by trees or by debris, and so our cell-by-cell -cell bypass diodes will actually give you better output over the period of your trip compared to a competitor. Now throughout the video, you might notice the soul sensor at 700 watts per meter squared. This is measuring solar irradiance, which is actually the power per unit area received by the sun. Now for most panels, they're tested at about 1,000 watts per meter squared, and as you can see, 700 is a little bit lower than that. So this lower solar irradiance, now coupled with the fact that it's late fall, and the fact that our panels are at a low slope, leads us to expect to have both samples operating at about 60 to 70% capacity. Now for our test, we're taking an IV measurement using this device of our panel and the competitor as we partially shade them in different conditions. We're going to compare those power outputs and we'll see how they change. To start, we're going to do a baseline just to see what it's like with no shading involved at all. So the baseline for the Sunflare panel right now is 77.3 watts at about 700 watts per meter squared. Right. Next, we're going to connect this to the competitor module and get a baseline reading for that. So the competitor right now is at 71 watts at the same solar irradiance. Now we're going to use boards to cover up the panels in different situations and then once again take readings as we go. First we're going to cover one row of the Sunflare solar panel. And now we'll take a reading. So with one row of cells covered, about the sixth of the module, it is now at 52.25 watts once again at 700 watts per meter squared of solar irradiance. So now we'll go to our competitor and we'll do the same thing. Okay, so with one row, about a quarter of the competitor module covered, the reading is uh, 32.4. So with just one row, there's more than half the power output that it used to be. Now the interesting thing is, is if we cover di two different rows, we'll see how that affects it. So Silas, we'll put this one uh, on the far side, and then we'll get these readings. Okay, so now with two different rows shaded, the power output for the Sunflare module at approximately 27 watts. Now we'll do the same thing to our competitor and we'll see how that changes. All right, so now with two different rows covered for our competitor, the power output is 0.2 watts. So with these rows shaded like this, this is now producing effectively zero watts. With ours, we're still putting out about 30 watts. And so this tells us that our cell-by-cell -cell bypass diodes only makes us lose about a power in uh, proportion to how many cells are covered. This panel over here only has two bypass diodes, one for these two columns and one for these two columns. So effectively, if anything on this column shaded, these two rows go out. If anything on this column shaded, these two rows go out. Now to test our theory, we're gonna actually change the orientation of how we're shading this and see what happens. Once again, we'll be taking a reading of the competitor. So now we only have a bottom row covered for our competitor. And once again, 0.1 watts. And so that's with only about one tenth of that module covered. Now what we'll do is we'll go over to the Sunflare module and we'll see how that's affected. So as expect expected, our module is still pumping out 55 watts, the competitor is pumping out zero. And so this kind of shows what the benefit is of having a bypass dial on every cell. And imagine if you're camping or anywhere you're at, you're gonna have shade from buildings, from trees, from anything. And this just shows that our module will guarantee that you're always at least getting some kind of power where you can have the slightly thing shaded for the competitor and the whole thing will go out. All right, just to get a little bit more information, some data, we're gonna move these panels around the cells and we'll see what the uh, power output change is like. So for the Sunflare panel, we're gonna move it to about the middle of the module. We'll get a recording here. And still, the module's putting out 50 watts of power. Now we'll do the same thing with our competitor. Now with our competitor covered, just like so, it is still putting out 0.1 watts. Now, since we know that our competitor only has two bypass diodes, for our final test, we're gonna shade two individual cells, one from each bypass diode, and we'll see what happens. All 
right, now with only two cells shaded, the output is only down to nine watts. And so pretty much, effectively, this panel is no longer charging anything. So now, now that we've covered two cells, let's cover one cell and see what the output will be. With one cell covered, we're down to 30 watts. So with one single cell covered on a competitor, it loses more than half the power output. Now what we're gonna do is do the exact same test, two cells and one cell for the Sunflare module. So now, Silas, if you can cover two cells individually. So with two cells shaded, the Sunflare solar module is producing 67 watts. So compare that to nine watts, you're effectively almost zero watts from the competitor. Now we'll do one cell. With one cell shaded, we're at 71 watts. So compared to 30 watts for the competitor, just one single cell will greatly reduce your power output. And that's why the Sunflare solar panel is a far better material to use and product to use, especially for RVs, camping situations. Again, when you're not sure how shady your environment might be. Here at Sunflare, we want all renewable energy companies to succeed. That way we can reduce CO2 emissions and combat climate change. It's important that solar customers have an understanding of the different technologies so they can choose a product that best fits their lifestyle. This way, everyone wins.